To me, it feels like it happened just yesterday. But in reality, it's been almost two years since Adolph Thornton, better known to the world as Young Dolph, was gunned down in our hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. While the rest of the world has moved on, there's a small community on the south side that still considers him a hometown hero. And for good reason, Dolph wasn't your ordinary rapper. Although he enjoyed the luxuries that came with his success, the houses, cars, and international travel, Dolph literally never left the hood and was willing to help anybody he deemed deserving. Nobody flew the Dolph flag harder than comedian and friend, Grove Hero. In an interview Grove had with the Raw Room podcast, he told a story of Dolph's generosity. Bro called me up one day and said he was about to change my life. He asked for my info and booked me a flight the very next day. And just like that, his life changed. Although Grove started out as a local comedian, he took full advantage of the opportunity and transformed his life dramatically. By following Dolph's blueprint of make a lot of money so you can bless a lot of people, Grove diversified and created several legitimate streams of income for himself. His contributions include buying real estate and allowing families to live there rent-free for a year, giving away fully functional food trucks, and has even raffled off his own Lamborghini. But this video isn't about Dolph's generosity. It's about the void of Memphis music that his death created. Who was going to pick up the flag that Dolph dropped in battle? Although Pooh Shiesty was locked up before Dolph's passing, he would have been the logical heir in my opinion. Despite being much older than Shiesty and their styles being completely different, the one thing the two rappers shared was their blatant in-your-face, man up for Memphis vernacular. In my opinion, you have to be from Memphis or have close ties to understand their slang and dialect. Like Louisiana, Florida, and even Atlanta, Memphis has a culture that runs so deep it's almost impossible to shake. The rapper that was expected to pick up Dolph's flag was his blood cousin and artist, Key Glock. During, his, during the later stages of Dolph's career, the two were inseparable. He was obviously grooming his cousin to be the next captain of the PRE battleship. Although most of Glock's hits came by featuring on Dolph songs, he was an artist in his own right. His videos, From Nothing, Dirt, and Mr. Glock, has over 26 million views combined. His biggest hit, Russian Cream, sits at a lofty 32 million views on YouTube as of today. Although Glock is an artist in his own right, some might argue that any success he's enjoying is solely based off his affiliation to Dolph. And respectfully, you have the rest of the PRE camp. And although I'm rooting for each one of those brothers, I don't think anybody outside of Memphis has ever heard of them. And of course, you have the mega label, CMG, ran by rapper slash mogul, Yo Gotti. Say what you will about the elusive label head, Gotti has managed to keep his label afloat as an artist and talent scout for the better half of 20 years now. Gotti is responsible for bringing us Moneybag Yo, Big Boogie, Glorilla, and a host of other talented artists. Nobody can argue his contribution to the music industry, but here in Memphis, it's a little more complicated than that. Gotti can never claim the title of King of Memphis, and he knows exactly why. Gotti may have been the face of Memphis music, but Dolph was the people's champ. Dolph represented every aspect of Memphis and was unapologetic about it. Whether we liked his music or not, you had to love him. Every family in Memphis has a Dolph in it. Young, flashy, hard-headed, you couldn't tell them shit. Those people always have a heart of gold and almost always die at an early age. Although CMG is loaded with a lot of homegrown talent, none of them belong to us, you know? We can only see them if we buy $100 tickets to their concerts, whereas Dolph might be behind you at the hood corner store. In one of his songs, he proclaimed that his first 20 videos were shot in his hood. He wasn't lying. Dolph showed love everywhere he went, but made the tragic mistake of thinking it would be returned. Unfortunately, it was that thinking that got him killed and has Joe Gotti calling Atlanta home now. The last rapper that kept at Memphis his entire career was a local rapper named Player Fly. If I labeled him the David Ruffin of Memphis rap, I don't think anybody in our hometown would argue the point. Literally every song the local legend released had references to South Memphis, more notably South Parkway, the block he grew up on. 
fly style of rap and constant references to his neighborhood made him stand out from the sea of rappers around him. Fly's popularity and fan base landed him in 3-6 Mafia for a brief stint. Money disputes and Fly's reluctance to play by the rules caused a fallout with the group's founder, DJ Paul, and they parted ways almost immediately after partnering. Although Player Fly had the talent to have a real career in hip-hop, personal demons and reluctance to adapt stunted his growth and minimized him to local legend status. Dolph, Shiesty, and Player Fly are three unfortunate reminders of what happens when you refuse to adapt to your situation. All three had the potential to do great things, not just for themselves, but the people they loved the most. Dolph's situation was inevitable. This brother literally had demons stalking him in his own neighborhood. And for what? Nobody won in that tragic situation. Nothing but mourning families and heartbroken friends on both sides. Memphis lost a native son, and the music business lost one of the purest entertainers in the country. Long live a real Memphis vet, Adolph Thornton.